645, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the acceptance so of moved. the agenda. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. The next item is the discussion and vote on cable television grant for the school department. Uh, Rich Long, is he coming tonight? Is anyone coming for this? Do you want me to speak on it for a second, or yeah, John, can, John can also? This is uh, yeah. this is based on renewal of a service that we uh, that we got a year ago that actually puts content on our um, two television channels so that it's not always flicking the same uh, picture all the time. So it shows um, different local news, the weather, um, any sort of things that we want to embed into it, as well as trivia and all this other sort of stuff. So it's it's really um, a program for eight hundred eighty nine dollars that constantly streams content on our two uh, television channels. It also includes the community bulletin board, so that people have information relevant that I can post it, and it's been helpful. So that's like another aspect of that technology. Great. Thank you. One Thank motion. You. Uh, before a motion, just about a, has anyone else lost their cable the other day? Everybody? All I know is mine's flickering on and off. I got I mean, mine is mine crazy. today was this morning was flickering all over the I place. I mean the cable. That, I get all my cable stations when I get these two big boxes in the mail. They're adapters or some sort, which I know nothing about. And but I think those are for. My if, you the, if you have extra additional TVs, those boxes are supposed to go to it. It's not for the actual. Bo my problem is that the box that I'm that I have is is con constantly flickering. It's driving me crazy. Um, yeah, me too. For the last there's four not days. A, not a, I get three, well, probably not for. Anything. How's everybody's yard doing? This yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Maybe I better check through the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Could have something to do with that. Me and neighbors is spliced in. We have a motion to be made and seconded. I, I'll make the motion. Okay. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to disperse funds from the cable television grant in the amount of $889 for the Latronics annual subscription, which provides news, et cetera, between programs on Channel 10 and 22. The school department has requested this uh, disbursement. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that is unanimous. The next item has been postponed until the next selectmen's meeting, Kim, I believe. Yes. May 20, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have to set the hours for the polling for the special election on June 19th. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to set the polling hours from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. for the June 19th, 2010 special town election. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that is unanimous. Uh, the next item, agenda item number six, vote ballot questions, special town election. This is a, uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the items of the special town meeting will need a a ballot question at a townwide election. Um, and this I, is for the Wampatuck repair because that would be an yep. override, a debt exclusion override. Yep. So should I read what this draft ballot is so we know what we're talking about here? I just want as a point of information, the wording for an override question is in the statute for Proposition 2 and a half. So if you get questions about why there's no amount in it or whatever, in the statute itself is the exact wording you must use. Okay. okay. And so that was provided by town council. So this ballot question would be, shall the town of Situate be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and one half, so called? The amounts required to pay for the bonds issued in order to design, repair, improve, and equip the Wampatuck Elementary School at 266 Tilden Road, situate Massachusetts. And Bound Council is. And that's what we're approving tonight. That's the what wording we'll appear of that. on the ballot. Yep. Okay. I'll make that as a move Long to approve motion. that wording. Yep. I'll second that. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the wording uh, given by Town Council. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Just one point of interest on that. That, uh, Trish, that's a 20-year a note on that, correct? I believe. Yes. yes. So 
after 20 years when this note is paid off, and I think the estimate was about $12 a person or $12 for a $500,000 home in situate per year, then it goes away after 20 years when the when it is paid for. That's right. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that is unanimous. Assignment of articles for the special town meeting. You said there were two articles. One is the uh, acquisition of Pier 44, <coughs> and the second article is the, as we just discussed, the Wampatec Elementary School Repair Project. Uh, we'll do two things here. We'll vote to, well, we'll do it separately. We'll vote to support or not support Article 1, and we'll do the same thing with Article 2, mm -hmm. and then we'll deal with the assignment of the article. Did we, did we already vote to approve them? I think at a previous meeting. So this is just the assignment? Just the assignment. Just the assignment. Okay. Uh, acquisition of Pier 44. I'd like to... Jim, I'm going to just abstain from that. Tony and myself do that as, as, uh, as a team together. Okay. And we'll work out the details ourselves. Okay. Great. Article 2 is the Wampatec Elementary School Repair Project. I'm happy to. Um, if that's all right for the rest, I'll be happy to take that article. Sure. Fine. John, John Dan, he will take that. If I could just remind the board and, and, and just say to Bill, uh, as you know, I'm not going to be able to attend that special town meeting because I've got an immovable professional obligation um, that night out of state. So uh, best of luck with this. Obviously, I support this completely, and uh, I think this is a, a good way to go about it. One one other point, and Trish, I don't know if you're going to talk about this later. Are we going to talk about it? Okay, then I'll I'll just wait. Whenever Are you, you right now? I think, it would okay. I think if thank you. No, I'm, is this on Pier Forty Four? Uh, Pier Forty Four. All right, I'm just going to step off <laughs> while you discuss it. All right. Um. You have information in your packet relative to the information that the school committee would like to distribute for the informational meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. at the library um, relative to the two Warren articles. So you have that in your packet relative to Wampatuck School and the debt exclusion. What I just passed out, and there's some additional information in your packet, is the proposed agenda and the handouts for that informational meeting tomorrow night and by extension, depending on how that goes, whether we want to pass some of this out at town meeting next Tuesday and we can regroup after that. Um, what, there's a number of documents that we've put together to inform folks about the town meeting that's coming up and in fact is why the board scheduled the informational meeting. I think the board has been sensitive to the concerns that this is a very quickly happening town meeting and we haven't had an opportunity maybe to get as much accurate and informative information out as we wanted to. Um, what I've put together is some factual information about the acquisition of Pier 44, the assessed value, the settlement agreement, um, what the obligations of the town are relative to the conditions of that, the taxes paid, the MBTA mitigation fund, what's that, you, what is that intended purpose of that is, what it's been used so far so far, and what the board has negotiated in, in, as far as its ability to acquire uh, Pier 44 with those funds. That's all there and explained. There's a bullet description of the benefits of acquiring that property, also some of the challenges with the property, a timetable that sort of said where were we four months ago, where are we now, and then some next steps and frequently asked questions. There's just a couple things that you have in your handouts that um, I want to reiterate. One is the property value card that shows the assessed value of, and gives a foot plan, plot plan, whatever, of the, um, the building that's on it. There's a memo from the building commissioner about what the permissible zoning uses are and what can and can't be done on that property. And most folks will probably be surprised to know that a private use of that property is much more limited than the public use or municipal use of the property. We did an extensive interior inspection of the facility today with the wiring inspector, the plumbing inspector, the um, 
building commissioner, the deputy fire chief, a member of the conservation commission who's also a builder who has done uh, work on the premises and we also met with the prior owner um, of the restaurant to talk about the improvements he made just before he vacated. There's a memo on that. There's also um, information in here about um, additional uses of the property, explaining the water rights that we would have if we purchased the property, uh, an analysis of the MBTA mitigation agreement and what we've spent on it so far, and a summary of the conditions there. So um, I'd like you to review those and, and hopefully get your assent in the next day, you know, next 12 to 24 hours so we can copy those and have those available to folks and then open it up to questions and answers. There's been a lot of involvement the last week um, with town officials, department heads to try to find out as much about the property as we can. Um, I was very delighted to know today while I was there that the building is in very good shape and um, I think, you know, it, tomorrow night will be an opportunity to tell folks about these two Warren articles so we have an informed town meeting. Yeah, I'd just like to thank you and thank all the department heads for where we had uh, the past few weeks and putting this all together, we all understand that it was a, uh, uh, a lot of work to it to make sure it was done right and there's a lot of misinformation around as there always is on, on, on uh, town meeting articles, uh, quite often anyway. And I hope that, I'm sure that this, this uh, sheet will we'll, we'll address most of those questions. So thank and, and you. And I just, and you know, I know there's been concerns that, you know, there's still not a lot of information out there, but I want to make sure that what we hand out tomorrow night is correct. Yep. And that's, it required several different eyes to look at it, and, you know, we've been still negotiating the final terms of the agreement with the MBTA and want to make sure it gives us as much flexibility as we wanted for the town to be able to do what they want. But that being said, there are strict restrictions on that property we're not going from having it restricted to open space to anything we want. Mm -hmm. It's open space to continued public access for recreational and educational uses. Yep. So it's not free and clear. Thank you. Rick Murray. If I could just add to that the one thing is she all, we've also met with Mark Patterson, the harbor master, throughout this whole discussion. And um, I gave a little summary to the Waterways Commission last <coughs> week. And in our packet, there's a letter from John Murphy, chair of the Waterways Commission, endorsing this acquisition because the Waterways Commission was very interested in this, not only for water use potential, but also regardless of how it's used, public access to the waterfront. You know, whatever model we end up with, public access is going to be a requirement and will be really enhanced. And the Waterways Commission is very interested in that. So there's a, there's a, a letter in our packet about that as well. Thank them for that, if you would. Will do. Uh, if, if there's no further discussion on Pier 44, I see our friend Bill Johnson from the school uh, committee is here. We uh, voted two weeks ago to support the article. We've assigned it tonight. Would you like to come up and just give us a I get Mr. Danny? synopsis of what it is or not? <laughs> yeah, get John if you would. Just. We understand that, you know, you've done a lot of work on it. Yeah, and, I think we were doing more detail of, uh, you know, actually the scope of the work, but it's mostly is actually core renovations. Yep. To the Wampatec School, uh, it's actually, <coughs> there's two pieces of, uh, of the uh, SOI, which is the, the information that we submitted to the MSBA for our re renovation and get improvements. So we've been approved by the MSBA, the Mass School Bu Building Authority, uh, to move ahead with the process. We're st there's multiple stages of moving ahead, but the, the next step is actually to get the, the funding from the town commitment. And once that, we continue to move forward with, with the MSBA. But it's really renovations of the boiler system at the, uh, the Wampatec school system, the HVAC system, some tile work that has to be done there. So just core infrastructure for the Wampatec school. And we also have, like you said, a lot of stuff going on. We actually have requested reimbursement for the work that we did at Wampatuck uh, a couple years ago. So uh, that the legacy expense that we've actually included as part of this that we hope to be reimbursed. And MSBA has been open to reviewing that $1.3 million of expenses that we already we already put into the building. We put all new doors in the building, all new windows in the building, uh, insulation in the building two years ago, two summers ago, or three summers ago, not even three summers ago. 
Uh, so that's actually part of our MSBA request. So we've already spent that money, and, we, and then we do it. We're expecting to be reimbursed for that too. Tomorrow night, you'll be at the meeting at the pre town meeting, or somebody yeah, will. So, right. We'll have a, we have. A, I can bring it well, at that meeting. I'll have actually an overview of the, uh, the actual work that. That'll be done. perfect. Uh, the the town. You know, again, it gets back to you know, is it the school or the town? You know, the school really is just facilitating the administrative side yeah. of getting the funding. It actually, then the handoff is really to Dave Deneen and his team that on the town uh, was it town <coughs> building committee? Public buildings. The town public yeah. building committee. So really, so we have our MSBA committee, but we're really just trying to move ahead the administrative funding yeah. and dotting the I's and making sure the MSBA has everything to move forward. But then we really hand it off to the people who are really mm -hmm. experts at actually doing the renovation of the building. And that group has been fantastic to work with. They're really running with the ball, getting out, throwing things in order, and hopefully that we get the work done this summer. So tomorrow night, any particular questions can be addressed if they come up. Thank you. Bill, is there a, uh, is there a chance that we could do the work and not get reimbursed? Or, I mean, is it as, as solid as it could be right now with the reimbursement from? Yeah, I don't, you know, I think we'll have, before we put any shovel in the ground, that we will have a commitment from the MSBA that we'll move down. So we've already been approved for the project. Right. You know, they're just looking at school. I mean, they have this whole formula that we got to send school enrollment for the next, the last few years, they run into this formula. They, we have two more site assessments coming uh, to look at the school. So it's actually, a, you know, it's a, it's a tough process with many steps. I think we broke it down as like 32 steps or something like that to get to the end. Uh, but if you back think in the early 2000s when these some of these towns were building schools that were, you know, 80 and 100 million dollars, mm. the state finally said, stop. You know what? Absolutely. We're going to approve the scope in the building before we fund any project and say, instead of saying we're going to fund 42% of this, the building, they're going to fund 42% of the project. Uh, and then you have all these like internal project managers you have to hire to monitor the expenses and keep the state up to date so you don't go over on your budget. Thank you. Sean? Can we get it done this summer, Bill? Is that, that is the intention? Yeah, right? so we, they moved ahead with, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not a builder, so uh, what, the bids and the work that needs to be done. So they've actually taken the ball and been running with that and pulled together all the bids. So we're hoping to release those at any second. I see. And I think they've been getting feelers out there related to the work. The who's boiler work is who's the, they? Uh, it's the school, uh, the town, public building. Oh, okay, the public buildings commission. commission. I just, oh, okay, gotcha. Some of the work needs to be done during the summer. It can go into the boiler room, can go into the school year, but by October 15th, they have to be up and running. We need a new boiler by October 15th. Right. We will not make it right. through another winter with that boiler. We, and to be honest, it's just a waste of money. We're just pumping money into that uh, each year to keep it up and running. Uh, so, I mean, that's the biggest piece of the expense. But we, we do what we do right now. We, again, we're meeting with those guys, uh, Dave Deneen and uh, Sean Mulker. Sean Mulker, right? Have been, they're both on the on our committee, and, uh, and I don't forget the guy's name, but the new engineer in town, Dave Ka Cafferty. Kevin Cafferty. Kevin Cafferty. And, and Joe and I are actually co-chairing the MSBA, the, the school uh, building committee. But we really taking we our last meeting, we really kind of took the hand off and said. You guys start with the project and get it moving, so when we get the funding, you can just run with it. So, I mean, real, we have to have the boiler start. So that's like, if you had to break the project up, that has to be done, and if we have to wait a little bit, we'll have to wait a little bit. Well, I know it's been a ton of work for years now that you guys have been working on this, so great job. I mean, the amount of savings are, if you get that that legacy stuff thrown in, the reimbursement rate is, you were telling me, what, 60-something percent? Yeah, if you th figure the way I look at it is the legacy cost, we've already, already sunk. So we've already paid that money. So if you we're getting reimbursed from that, too, it almost bumps the number up to 67 cents on the dollar on any of the new dollars that we do spend. So it's really 42% on legacy and, and new project. But if we've already spent those money and they're sunk costs and we weren't expecting reimbursement for them, it's 67 cents on any new dollars that we spend. That's great. You know, and I would too like to say, you know, and we always toot, toot the horns, but uh, you know, Jim Cantwell really did help uh, last summer and uh, spring, I mean, last, in September when we actually got approved. I think we were on the phone every week together, and he was <laughs> making sure that uh, our other two representatives, Bradley and Headland, were up to date and making the phone calls as, you know, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of politics going into this and making sure you're, 
you're in line and you have your I's dotted and the T's crossed when you get to that last meeting in September to get approved. <coughs> thank you. Okay. Great job. So, thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you, you Bill. See you tomorrow night. Yep. Now that's at the library at 7. Tomorrow. Library at 7. Any, for the 12 people watching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the next item is reorganization. I think. Yep. Is reorganization. Chairman, could I move to appoint John Danahy as the new chairman? Second. Motion to appoint John Danahy as chairman and a seconded. Uh, discussion? Just a, a congratulations to Mr. Danny for running a great campaign, and congratulations on your win. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vignani. Thank you. Ditto. Appreciate that very much, gentlemen. Uh, all in favor of Mr. Danny here as the incoming chair, signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. <laughs> Voted unanimous. Move to nominate Tony Vignani as clerk. Second. Second. Applause. <laughs> Go it again is unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> is there a pause or something? Uh, well, it used to be a pause, but I'm, this is like I'm still chairman. Which, well, I'm You'll not. notice I got that in there as fast as I possibly could. I have, with all I have further <laughs> discussion on the chairman. Uh, <laughs> John, I, I'd be honored. To be clerk. John, all in favor? And I will, uh, step aside. And um, before you do, though, I think it's only in order, as you know, Joe. Um, um, Every time that we have reorganization, and as this um, board has always reorganized and reconstituted itself, um, there's always been an opportunity to be able to say thank you to the former chair. In this case, Joseph P. Norton has served this town for the past year in a stellar manner. Uh, with his wisdom, with his guidance, he has efficiently taken uh, the board through a year, a very, um, I don't want to say problematic or tra traumatic one, but certainly given the situations that the, have come to the town the past uh, year, he, he has stewarded it in such a manner that um, I think every member of this board should be thankful. Uh, we have a new town administrator. I think she's been very um, thankful for Joe's um, guidance, Joe's input, his knowledge, his wisdom. And keep in mind that, you know, Joe's been here for, very, uh, for a long time. He's committed himself, <laughs> you know, I, I mean that sincerely. I don't mean it in any disrespectful manner. You know, 27 years, Joe has, has donated his time to this town. 27 years, he has come to meetings. 27 years, he has come to, as liaison, to go to other meetings, sacrificing his personal time to his wife, to his children. He has donated his time privately to other things, and I only go right to Community Christmas, and I take a look at all the photographs of my kids sitting on Santa's lap. As an example, baseball, other items, you know, this town should be very thankful to thank an individual who has committed himself or herself, in this case, Joe, for 27 years. And I have to say, in addition to the recent election that I had, which I thank everybody for, Joe was reelected, and he should have been, and I commend Joe for that. Um, we have a gift, as we always do, and I want to say that um, it's been a pleasure for this year. I look forward for another three years with Joe. Um, also, this may not be his last, but I think it's important when I say last for chair. Um, he has been chair for seven times, and that's remarkable. Um, I don't believe, and I, I, I didn't look up the history, but I think this is unprecedented. So the town should be thankful for the commitment, for the sacrifice he has done. I know I have been. I think that my fellow board members have. And as a result, we have given Joe, obviously, the proverbial card, yep. <laughs> as well as gift. And um, the gift happens to be coming. It's going to be coming soon. And some sweets to make it sweeter. Thank that is no you. longer chair. Thank you so very, very much. We thank Joe, and I have to say, everybody should thank you. I thank you for, for these and the gifts, and I especially thank the board for for their uh, cooperation and commitment this year because uh, so often said it, it, it's not a job that one person can do. And without the uh, members of this board, without uh, town administrator Tricia, Sheila and Kim, uh, particular note, uh, none of this would come together. So uh, without belaboring this any longer, I thank you. I've enjoyed this past year. I am even looking for more to this coming year <laughs> when not being chair. I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very time-consuming job, as you can imagine, and sometimes exhausting. So, But 
but it is fun. We enjoy it. We hope we did some good. So thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Um, now, as, as acting chair, you should stay right there. I'm just going to say uh, this is probably my shortest meeting as chair, so I'm thankful. Um, I'll entertain a, a motion to adjourn. Move the board of selectmen vote to adjourn the meeting at 712 p.m. Is second. The second. Any discussion? Very good. Thank you very much, folks. Nicely done, Mr. Denny. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you.